This programme follows on chronologically from Volume 5 in the series, which looked at the railways of Ireland in the 1940s and 50s. When these scenes at Thurlows and Cork were filmed in 1948, with very few exceptions, the steam locomotive dominated Ireland's railways. At its peak in the 1920s, there were over 3,400 route miles of railway in the country. By 1955, this had fallen to 2,700, a relatively small contraction over that period of 35 years. From the mid-1950s on, a period of rapid change and decline would begin, which would not only see the virtual elimination of steam traction, but a drastic reduction in the size of the Irish railway network. Our films from the 1960s were made by Yorkshireman Jeff Lum, who visited Ireland frequently throughout the decade. We first join up with him on his quest to see some of the last steam workings in the Irish Republic. In July 1962, J9060 number 250 was on station pilot duty at Cork's Glanmy Road station. Shunting a van at the same location was J26 class number 560, an 060 tank built for the Midland Great Western Railway in 1893. This is Cove Junction on the busy suburban line from Cork to Cove. When we last visited this line in 1948 in Volume 5, the trains were all steam powered. By 1962, the diesel rail cars first introduced by CIE in 1952 have been operating on this route for many years. A track maintenance vehicle arrives and is parked in the siding at the cork end of the station. In the course of this programme we will be visiting several lines not previously covered in the series. The first of these is the branch to Yall, which left the Cork to Cove route at Cove Junction. The Yall train is headed by J4 class 060 number 262. Such had been the progress of dieselisation on CIE in the late 1950s that a steam hauled passenger train was very much a rarity by 1962. This line was opened by the Cork and Yall Railway in 1860. That company was taken over by the Great Southern and Western in 1866. Though passenger services on the line ended in February 1963 and goods traffic ceased in 1978, most of the track was still in place in 1997 and the line had not been officially closed, even though it had not seen a train for many years. At Yall, number 262, built at Inchicore Works in Dublin in 1914 and one of the last steam locos on the books of CIE when it was officially withdrawn in 1965, is turned for the run back to Cork. At Laffins Bridge on the Clonmel to Thurles line, J15060 number 104, dating from 1873, is seen on a goods train. Whilst some steam could still be found on secondary routes like this, at Thurles number 800 Maeve, one of the three massive 460s introduced in 1939 to haul the principal trains on the Dublin to Cork main line, had been withdrawn, and a new General Motors diesel works the mainline express which had once been the prerogative of number 800 and her sisters. One of the great joys of the railways of CIE in the early 1960s was the mixture of the old and the new working together. Jeff Lum travelled on the mixed train on the Foynes branch in County Limerick in July 1962. The locomotive, four-wheel Deutz diesel hydraulic number G611 was the first member of the second batch of these machines bought by CIE. It had only entered service the previous month. By contrast, the passenger coach, a six-wheel composite of Midland Great Western origin, dated from the turn of the century. The train is shunted to pick up a castle wagon at Askeaton.
Ballon Grain was the point where the Foynes branch joined the Limerick to Trolley line. Further shunting is required to pick up three tar wagons. At Ballangran, the mixed train is crossed by the rail cars forming the 510 Limerick to Tralee service. The Foynes branch is still busy with freight traffic today, but the North Kerry line is closed and its tracks have been lifted. On the line avoiding Limerick station, a van train from the Kerry yard is headed by J15 number 101, dating from 1882. The J15s were Ireland's most numerous type of steam locomotive. 111 of these 060s entered service on the Great Southern and Western Railway between 1866 and 1903. The train is banked by another J15, number 161, built in 1871. Seen here on the 23rd of July 1962, both these locomotives were withdrawn the following year. Preserved on a plinth at Ennis Station is West Clare Railway steam locomotive number no. 5 Sleeve Callan, a tangible reminder of this Norrigade system which featured on volumes 1 and 3 of this series. The West Clare section finally closed on the 31st of January 1961 and CIE buses occupy the site of the Norrigade platform at the station. J15 number 125 heads a northbound goods out of the station. Further reminders of the Norrigage are provided by the three Walker diesel locomotives introduced in 1955 to complete the modernisation of the West Clare. Even dieselisation did not save the system, though it was the last of the Irish three-foot gauge lines to remain open to the public. As the J15 heads out of the station, it passes Metropolitan Vickers Diesel number C216 at the head of a goods from Galway to Limerick. Jeff Lum's search for the last of CIE steam now takes him to a Tymon Junction in County Galway, where the branch to Loch Ray diverges from the Galway to Dublin main line. The branch train calls at Dunsandle, the only intermediate station on this nine mile long line which opened in 1890 and survived until 1975. The motive power on the line on the 25th of July 1962 was G2 class 240 number 654, built by the Midland Great Western Railway at its Broadstone Works in Dublin in 1897 as number 28 Clara. This elegant Victorian 240 was in its last year of service.
A stroll down Lochray's Main Street provides a reminder of a once common sight on the roads of Ireland as a CIE P-Class bus arrives on a service for Galway. By the following summer, steam had been banished from the Lochray branch. The single coach branch train leaving the town for a time in junction is powered by C-231. Following its withdrawal from service in 1985, this locomotive was one of the two members of its class preserved by the Irish Traction Group. Later that day, number C-231 arrives back at Loch Ray with a mixed train from the junction. Returning to 1962, another surviving Midland Western locomotive brings a train of empty hopper wagons out of Athlone and onto the Mayo branch. J19 class 060 number 610, dating from 1888, is heading for the quarry at Licaro, which provided stone ballast for the railways until its closure in 1989. <laughs> Another branch line in the west, which remained a bastion of steam right up to its closure in 1963, was that from Kilfree Junction, on the former Midland Great Western Line to Sligo, to Balhadarine. The branch locomotive on the 27th of July 1962 was J18 Class 060, number 574, built at Broadstone in 1891. The layout at Balhadarine was typical of that found at the end of branch lines throughout the country. The station had only one platform, with a run-round loop for the locomotive. There was a goods shed, a loading bay for cattle, a staple traffic on the railways of Ireland for many decades, a water tower and a single track engine shed for the branch locomotive. The only thing missing at Balahadarine was a signal box. Here the token instruments were kept in the station master's office in the station building. The days of such delightful but sadly unprofitable branch lines were numbered. This one closed completely in February 1963. The station carter with his CIE horse and dray were very much in keeping with the vintage atmosphere which the Balahadarine branch preserved right into the swinging 60s. Jeff Lem's trip down the Cork main line in July 1962 shows how dominant diesel power was on CIE's premier line by this time. B114, one of the first two mainline diesels, built in 1951, waits with the goods train at Islandbridge Junction. A-class diesel A52 is passed on another goods between Island Bridge and Inchicore. The workers' train from Inchicore to Kingsbridge Station is hauled by Deutz Diesel G613. Diesel rail cars and locomotives dominate the former steam depot at Inchicore. The first up passenger train passed is hauled by Diesel C206. At Ballybrophy, a down goods is powered by A50, painted in the original silver colour scheme applied to these locomotives. The exhaust of the crusty diesel engine gives, as it often did, a very good impersonation of a steam locomotive.
Jeff Lum travelled on the connecting service from Ballybrophy on the line to Nina and Limerick as far as Ross Cray, the train being hauled by A8. He had come to Ross Cray to travel on a branch which was soon to be closed, the line to Burr. Once the mainline train has departed, the branch set pulls into the platform. The train is in charge of one of the smaller Metropolitan Vickers C-Class diesels, C228. Introduced in 1957, these locos, fitted with 550 horsepower Crossley engines, were designed for duties such as this. The line to Burr, the home of Lord Ross and his famous telescope, opened in 1858 and closed at the end of 1962. As the local runs round its train at Burr, it is worth taking a moment to examine some of the diesels which had banished steam so quickly from the railways of the Republic of Ireland. The first mainline diesel locomotives on CIE were a pair of sulzer engine machines originally numbered 1100 and 1101 which were introduced in 1950 and 51. These were later renumbered B113 and 114. We saw one of these earlier at Kingsbridge. It was the introduction of the Metropolitan Vickers A-Class diesels in 1955-56 which began the rapid dieselisation of CIE. A3, which entered traffic in September 1955, is seen at Tralee Station on the 25th of July 1965 as it backs on to a Sunday excursion bound for Phoenix. The Phoenix branch ran parallel with the North Kerry route to Limerick for a mile and a half or so beyond Tralee Station before striking off to the coast. The original 1200 horsepower Crossley diesel engines on the A-Class give endless bother and it was not until they were rebuilt with General Motors power units between 1968 and 1971 that they became really reliable locomotives. The A-Class were first turned out in a silver livery that got filthy very quickly in traffic. This was later replaced by an attractive shade of green which we will see later in the programme. But by the mid-1960s, they were being repainted in a rather uninspired black, as displayed here on A3. The train arrives at Feenet, by this time the most westerly railhead in Europe. CIE was to get another 30 years' work out of most of the class, before they were finally withdrawn in the mid-1990s. CIE dispensed with the services, one of several members of this important class which still survive. It was the arrival of the first General Motors diesels that paved the way for the final elimination of steam. The 15 members of the 121 class were delivered in early 1961 from the manufacturers in the United States. One of these, B126, here leaves Mallow on a train for Cork in August 1969. CIE's 1960s mainline diesel fleet was completed with the arrival in 1962 of the first of the 141 class from General Motors. Mechanically these were similar to the earlier 121s but had a cab at each end. The first batch consisted of 37 locos. A further 12 machines, the 181 class, were delivered in 1966, though for all practical purposes they were identical to the earlier 141s. B190 one of the later batch, 
leaves Mallow for Cork in July 1969. The twin cab GMs carried CIE's 1960s black and orange livery from their introduction. With the diesels dominant on the main lines of CIE, Jeff Lum sought out other areas of railway interest. One of these could be found right in the heart of Dublin at Guinness's Brewery, where up to 1965 a private railway system on two different gauges aided the production of Ireland's favourite tipple. For internal transport within the brewery, an extensive 1 foot 10 inch narrow gauge system was operated. This was on two levels, linked by a spiral tunnel. Originally operated by steam locomotives, latterly planet diesels were used on these lines. Guinness's brewery at St James's Gate was close to Kingsbridge Station. The brewery and the goods yard at the station were linked by a standard gauge street tramway which was worked by Guinness's own locomotives. Empty wagons were brought from Kingsbridge up to the brewery where they were loaded with cases and casks of the famous stout for dispatch by rail to every corner of Ireland. These scenes filmed in 1962 show Hedsville Clark 040 saddle tank number two shunting at the brewery. Hedsville Clark four wheel diesel number four moves along St John's Road on its way to the goods yard at Kingsbridge. Kingsbridge station, known after 1966 as Euston, is just out of the picture to the right of the camera. The other steam locomotive operated by Guinness in the 1960s was number three, another Hedswell Clark 040. These locos used on the tramway through the streets had skirts over their wheels in motion for the protection of road users. When rail services ended at the brewery in 1965, number three was presented to the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland. Inside the brewery we get a glimpse of an hour gauge steam locomotive inside one of the ingenious 5 foot 3 inch gauge wagons which were fitted with gears and rollers. These transmitted the motion of the narrow gauge loco to the rail wheels of the wagon, thus allowing it to work trains on broad gauge tracks. Volume 6 in this Irish railway series is devoted to what we call Ireland's best kept railway secret, the over 1000 miles of 3 foot gauge track still in use today in the peat industry. Jeff Lum visited a number of Bordnemona systems in the 1960s when the railway operations were not as sophisticated as they are today. It is interesting to have this historical perspective on these lines at that time. At Clonsast, near Port Arlington, the three steam locomotives built by Andrew Barclay in 1949 could still be seen in July 1963. All three were subsequently preserved Number two going to the Irish Steam Preservation Society for use on their line at Stradbally in County Leash. Number three was used on the Shane's Castle Railway in County Antrim. The Hunslet wagon masters, which were soon to dominate the peat railways of Bordnemona, had not yet arrived in numbers by this time. Small Ruston locos are still the prime movers on the Clonsass system in 1962. A loco owned by the Electricity Supply Board shunts at the peat-fired power station fed by the bogs of Clonsast. Wagon bodies containing peat were lifted by cranes to the bunkers, a much slower procedure than the wagon tipplers which are used today. In 
In the 1960s, several of the Bordenamona systems had a gauge of two foot. The only one of these which is still active is that at Glenties in County Donegal. Loco LM198 was a product of Ruston and Hornsby. It was built in the mid-1950s. The small four-wheeled wagons used on the isolated Lenti system are in marked contrast to the buggy vehicles used on the bigger systems in the Irish Midlands. The machinery used to harvest the peat is a good deal less sophisticated than that used today by Bordenamona, as can be judged in the sixth volume of the series, The Peat Rubies of Ireland. One of the Rustons, based at Glenties, crosses the bridge over the River Owenae, the only significant engineering feature on this system. With the arrival of the A and C-class diesels, CIE was making a determined effort to get rid of steam as quickly as possible. Then in 1958, with the dissolution of the board which had run the Great Northern Railway on behalf of both governments, CIE found itself with half the steam fleet of the Great Northern on its books. Not a lot had changed at the Great Northern's Amiens Street station in Dublin, four years into the CIE regime in July 1962. The station pilot was GNR SG3060, number 14, which is still in GNR livery, as is S Class 440, number 174, Carantul, leaving the station on a train for Hoth. A set of CIE built AEC railcars in green CIE livery head past East Wall Junction and the GNR's railcar depot at Fairview. GNR VS Class 440 Lagan, renumbered 58 by the Ulster Transport Authority, who got this local when the assets of the GNR were divided up in 1958, passes Fairview as it nears the end of its journey from Belfast. Later in the day, the station pilot, number 14, backs down onto some coaching stock. Number 58, Lagan, makes a spirited start on its return journey to Belfast. The five VS class locos delivered by Bayer Peacock in 1948 were probably the last new 440s built anywhere in the world. These sublime machines represented the final flourishing of the long tradition of Great Northern locomotive design, which dated back to the formation of the company in 1876. A year later, in July 1963, as another VS number 207 Boyne steams past Huth Junction, it will be seen that CIE's diesels were by now dominating workings on the former Great Northern main line as well. General Motors diesel B157 heads for Belfast. A36 follows with the 635 service to Drogheda.
B147 powers the Up Enterprise Express from Belfast. As we head north up the Great Northern Main Line, we see B147 again, as it pulls out of Drogheda Station and crosses the magnificent viaduct which spans the River Boyne. Passing the GNR's works at Dundalk is VS Class number 207 Boyne on a train from Belfast to Dublin. By 1963, some services had a change of motive power at Dundalk. Here, B174 and A32 come off the 350 arrival from Dublin, which they have brought this far. The A-Class is in the green livery, which replaced the silver colour scheme in which they were first turned out. The diesels are replaced by the UTA's WT-Class 264 tank, number 54, for the run to Belfast. Steam purists will take pleasure from the thought that in this instance apparently only one tank engine is required to do the work of the two diesels. We will head north behind number 54. The line climbs steadily from Dundalk for 11 miles to its summit, 422 feet above sea level, near milepost 65 and a half. Our train passes an up goods headed by another WT. By now in Northern Ireland, the train crosses the Craigmore Viaduct before arriving at Gora Wood, junction for the branch to Newry and Warren Point, a line we have covered in earlier volumes in this series. Portadown Junction was where the lines from Derry, still open at this time, and Clonas, closed in 1957, met the Dublin to Belfast main line. GNR Railcar G, built in 1938, its engine compartment in the centre of the unit, was renumbered 105 by the UTA. Here it is seen arriving at Portadown on a service from Warren Point. For the first time in this programme we encounter one of the LMS NCC W-class moguls. Here, number 91, the Bush, is the local concerned. Displaced from their own line by dieselisation, a number of these locos ended their days on the surviving former Great Northern routes in Ulster. Seen at the south end of Portadown Station, SG Class 060 number 43 had carried the number 175 in its GNR days. At the north end of the station, a WT tank arrives on a train of CIE stock in both that company's new black and orange and earlier light green liveries. At the same location, the former GNR S Class 440 number 192, Slave Namon, renumbered 63 by the UTA, brings a train in from the Belfast direction, bound for Warren Point. Moving closer to Belfast, W Class 260 number 99, King George VI, passes through Lisburn with a heavy down goods on the 25th of July, 1964. Great Northern UG Class 060 number 47 shunts a goods from Antrim at Lisburn on the same date. Near Adelaide in the suburbs of Belfast, VS Class 440 number 207 Boyne heads out of the city with a train bound for Dublin. 
These locos, the largest of the Great Northern 440s, were restricted to the Dublin to Belfast line because of their weight. S-Class 440 number 171 Sleeve Gullion heads in the other direction, towards the city. The GNR engine shed in Belfast was at Adelaide. S-Class number 174 Carantul is seen at the shed. This was one of the four excret Northern 440s bought by the UTA from CIE in 1963, which retained their original blue livery. Also seen at Adelaide is VS Class No. 58 Ligon. This locomotive had gone to the UTA in 1958, but was never repainted by that organisation. PGS Class 060 No. 10, seen on shed in 1963, was built at Dundalk in 1904. Away from the shed and back on the main line, WT Tank No. 57 leaves Belfast with the 12.30 service for Dublin on the 25th of July 1963, the first of a sequence of trains we will see on this summer Saturday afternoon. UG No. 47 heads a heavy train bound for the seaside at Warren Point. CIE General Motors Diesel B133 in the original but short-lived grey and yellow livery which first adorned these locos arrives with a train from Dublin. S-Class No. 60 Sleeved Honoured arrives light engine at the Belfast terminus of the Great Northern Great Victoria Street Station which was a busy place that day. No. 60 Sleeved Honoured which had been repainted by the UTA in that company's black livery leaves Great Victoria Street with a train for Newry. A three-coat set of Great Northern Rail cars repainted in UTA dark green livery forms a stopping train to Lisburn. Station pilot duties are shared between a WT tank and the ex Great Northern 442 tank number 5. These locos were a familiar sight at both ends of the Great Northern main line for many decades. There was an age gap of over 40 years between the tank loco and the General Motors diesel B145. A similar interesting mixture of steam and diesel traction could also be observed in these years at Belfast York Road Station the terminus of the former LMS NCC lines serving Londonderry, Portrush and Larne. On the morning of the 20th of July 1963, one of the UTA's multiple purpose diesel units known as MPDs arrives at the station as 264 tank number 6 departs with the 8.35am to Londonderry. Sister Local No. 3 arrives with an uptrain, passing one of the pair of former Sligo, Leitrim and Northern Counties 064 tanks acquired by the UTA in 1957. These were the last new conventional steam locomotives supplied to an Irish railway. Fittingly, they were made by Bayer Peacock, who had supplied so many locomotives which ran in Ireland during the age of steam. In the 1930s, the NCC experimented with diesel rail cars most of which survived into the 1960s. Number four, seen here, dated from 1938. The line out of York Road climbed steeply for most of its first 12 miles up to Kings Bog Junction. Near White Abbey Station, WT Number 1, built by the LMS of Derby in 1947, is working hard with the 9.40am to Londonderry. Double heading was often called for in this section, as was the case with this heavy empty stock working, hauled by tanks numbers 55 and 52.
A set of multi-engine railcars leaves White Abbey Station. Just beyond this point, the line to Lauren branches off the main line to London Dairy on the 1930s built junction at Bleach Green. Prior to the construction of the impressive concrete viaducts here, mainline trains had to reverse at Green Island on the Lorne branch. WT number 8 steams across the mainline viaduct at Bleach Green, heading for Port Rush. For the moment we will take the other route and follow the tracks to Lorne. The UTA's multi-purpose diesel rail cars were remarkable in that they were designed to haul goods trains as well as convey passengers. Two MPDs demonstrate this ability as they speed a fitted goods for Larne Harbour, known to railway staff as the Perishables, through Carrickfergus Station in July 1963. That afternoon rail cars hauled the goods and a steam locomotive had the passenger train. I know it sounds odd, but we are dealing with the Ulster Transport Authority. North of Carrickfergus, the line ran close to the coast for most of the way. Larne had two stations, Larne Town and Larne Harbour. It was unusual to see an ex-grit northern locomotive on this route. Here SG3 number 33 brings a passenger train into Larne Town in July 1963. At Lawn Harbour, the trains connected with the British Railway steamers, which offered a regular service on the short sea passage to Stranraer in Scotland. WT number no. three is the engine shunting here on the 26th of July, 1963. Moving away from Lawn, we are now back on the NCC main line to Londonderry at Bleach Green Junction. The track diverging on the left of the train is the Down Lawn line, whilst that coming up on the right of the screen is the one used by trains from Lawn to Belfast. This is a view from the graceful curving concrete mainline viaduct itself. By this time, the line from Monkstown that enabled trains from the north to run directly to Larne and which had also been the only route to Belfast before the construction of Bleach Green Junction had been disconnected. At the top of the long climb out of Belfast, the pilot engine comes off and heads back towards the city. MPDs worked most of the scheduled passenger services on the NCC main line in the 1960s. In September 1965, a six car set with a trailer in the middle leaves Ballymena. Most of the rail cars are painted in the red and grey livery which the UTA introduced in that year for trains on the NCC section. Moving down the line, we come to Corinne. WT tank number 9 takes the Port Rush line in July 1963. At Ballykelly, the line crossed the runway of the Royal Air Force Base, which had opened during the war. Shackleton's of RAF Coastal Command can be glimpsed in the distance. The signal box on the railway was linked to the control tower on the airfield to guard against a train being permitted to cross the runway as an aircraft was landing. Trains had priority, except in an emergency. Having followed the NCC tracks to Londonderry, which are still in use, we will now focus on the other line to the city which closed in 1965. S-Class 440 number 170 Erigal approaches the Great Northern Station at Foyle Road in the city. NCC Mughal number 104 shunts at the former GNR station. By 1963 these locos were found more often here than at their own station on the other side of the River Foyle. Number 94, the main, goes off to the engine shed with the city's Craigavon Bridge over the River Foyle in the background. Another Mughal backs on to a passenger train at the station.
Number 91, the bush, leaves Derry with a passenger train for Roma, passing a Great Northern 060, shunting goods wagons. Number 104 is seen again, this time leaving Derry with the 8.05pm goods for Belfast on the 25th of July 1963. Heading south from Derry, the GNR line reached Straban, until 1959, the junction for the County Donegal Narragage. Reminders of the County Donegal are still plentiful in the summer of 1964. The CDR signal box, complete with name board, is surrounded by CDR and CI buses, working with services which have replaced the trains. A CDR road lorry passes remaining railway stock bought by an American but never sent across the Atlantic. The locos are now in safe hands in Ireland. A service from Belfast is formed of former GNR BUT railcars. The Straban engine that day shunting some cattle wagons is U-Class 440 number 66 Meath. Built by Bear Peacock in 1948, it had been numbered 201 by the Great Northern. Oma was the next major town on the GNR Derry Road. A local was usually to be found there to shunt the town's two goods yards. One of these was at the passenger station and can be seen behind the local SG3 number 35. These were among the most powerful 060s ever to run in Ireland. In 1964, on that last summer of the Derry Road, Mughal No. 99, King George VI, leaves Oma with a train for Belfast. Sister Loco No. 91, The Bush, waits to work a local from Oma to Derry. In the summer timetable, a through train ran from Dublin to Oma to cater for those making a pilgrimage to a holy island on Loch Derg near Pettigo in County Donegal, to which Oma was the nearest railhead. This working brought GM diesels to the line. The return working is seen here leaving Oma on the 27th of July 1964, hauled by GM diesel B171. WT number 55 approaches Oma with the 11.30 train from Belfast. Wheel cars form an afternoon working to Belfast at Oma Market Branch Junction. The vacuum brake vans tucked onto the back are so typical of both diesel and steam trains on the Derry Road. The next working up the bank out of Oma Station is to the town's other goods depot at the Market Yard, to which the branch on the right of the picture led. The locomotive on this duty is SG3060 number 33. The logo shunts bread containers at the market yard before heading back up the 1 in 71 gradient to the main line. Access to the branch was provided by a ground frame at the junction. A serious incident occurred here in 1933 during a bitter railway strike 
when a train from Dungannon was derailed, probably maliciously, on these points. We leave Oma behind the engine we saw earlier, WT number 55. Trains cross at Pomroy as we head back towards Belfast. The train arrives at Dungannon, formerly the junction for the line to Cookstown. SG 060 number 44 is seen at Portadown station, as is the now preserved S class 440 number 171 the Sleeve Gullion. Journey's end approaches as we pass the distinctive gantry of semaphore signals which gave incoming trains access to the platforms at Belfast's Great Victoria Street Station. Steam locomotives continued to be used in Northern Ireland up to 1971. In 1968, Northern Ireland Railways was formed to take over the operation of what remained of the province's railways in the wake of the Ulster Transport Authority's efforts to close most of them down. NIR inherited 22 steam locomotives from the UTA and they were used mostly on the contract to bring quarry spoil from Machramon near Larne to reclaim the land from Belfast Lock near Yorkwood Station on which the M2 motorway was later to be built. These trains are covered in Volume 1 of the series, Irish Rivies Miscellany. Number 51, shunting at York Road in July 1969, now bears the NIR logo on its tanks. The railways of Ireland were now wholly in the hands of the diesels. Multiple units in the north, diesel locomotives in the south. But that is another story, which I hope we will tell in a future volume in this series. <laughs>